multiple identities, multiple personalities, and multiple wives? Meet Frank the Fish, an average-looking sea dweller with plenty to hide behind the gills. This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Ordinary scene in an ordinary city? Think again, you goofy goober, because hiding in plain sight is one strange customer. Say hello to Frank the Fish, a mild-mannered, crappy, patty loving blue t-shirt aficionado with a promising future as an interior decorator. Look at this place. I mean, what is the theme here? Underwater? It's boring! In his spare time, he enjoys photography, dancing, and Krabby Patty-related musical theater. Serving local morons, heart-stopping, artery-clogging garbage, masquerading as food. Yay! So what's so peculiar about Frank? Exhibit A, multiple wives. Here's Frank on a date with his wife. And here's Frank on another date with his other wife. And who are all these other women? Make a wish, honey. Aren't two wives enough, Frank? But that's just the tip of the pineapple. Exhibit B, multiple identities. Most people know him as Frank. Hey, Frank. But SpongeBob calls him Dave. Happy Valentine's Day. You too, Dave. And he also goes by Percy. Nice catch, Percy. Who are you really, Frank? But hold on to your crappy patties, cause there's more. Exhibit C is voice. Watch video A. I'd like a double Krabby Patty. Now watch video B. What do you say? Now watch video A again. I'd like a double Krabby Patty. Now watch video B again. What do you say? A. I'd like a double Krabby Patty. B. What do you say? A. I'd like a double Krabby Patty. B. What do you say? One fish, three names, countless wives. And that voice? What do you say? Garbage? Something doesn't add up. Will we ever know the truth about Frank? Probably not. But one thing's for sure, he's hiding something. This is a load of barnacles. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. How in the world is Patrick lighting a fire underwater? Does Bikini Bottom defy the laws of physics? Is this all some form of weird aquatic voodoo? File this under H for, huh? She may look sweet, but behind the wrinkled scales could lie a dark secret. Oh, dear! This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Meet Mabel, one of Bikini Bottom's oldest citizens. Quiet, Granny, I'm talking! Oh! An ally to Mermaid Man. Sea creatures! Attack! And apparently, Larry the Lobster's mother. So polite. Yes, like we raised him. Seems like a harmless old fish, right? I mean, she can't even chew her own food. Think of the customer. But don't let this ancient sea dweller fool you. She could be more dangerous than an Alaskan bullworm. Don't believe us? Take a look at Exhibit A. That stare. Whenever there's a Bikini Bottom catastrophe, Mabel seems to be completely unfazed. Like when SpongeBob shattered his thumbs, My thumbs, Mabel didn't shed a tear. She just stared. When SpongeBob went missing, she just stared. And when there was a minor Krabby Patty related zombie apocalypse, Mabel just put her cane on her head and stared. That's one old and cold fish. But what else is suspicious about Mabel? Exhibit B, prison ties. This is the maximum security level. Who exactly is Mabel visiting? In prison? On the surface, there's nothing too fishy about this. But take a closer look. Look familiar? So polite. Yes, like we raised him. That's Mabel's husband. Are we expected to believe these two are in the same prison and not visiting each other? Just look how close they're sitting to each other. These two have been spotted together all over Bikini Bottom. Always acting like they don't know each other. What's with the secret meetings, you two? I knew it. Which brings us to Exhibit C, Super Villains. This security footage shows that despite working for Mermaid Man, Mabel has no problem openly defying superheroes. This dollar shall stay on the sidewalk. 
where it belongs. Hey, a dollar. Mabel, how could you? But if you think that's bad, <laughs> you won't believe what's next. Why, hello, Ray. Mabel! Mixing with Man Ray, Mermaid Man's arch nemesis. Why, hello, Ray. Ray? Well, aren't you too chummy? Exactly how deep does your relationship go? Anything for the gal I went to the prom with. Prom? Does your husband know about this? A cold, hardened old fish with prison ties. It's back to jail for you. And a strange relationship with supervillains. You haven't aged a day, Ray. No, you. Is the sweet old lady thing just an act? Oh, dear. Is this innocent old face just some sort of mask? Fools, you've blown my cover. Wait, another supervillain? How could this be? Was she the Dirty Bubble the whole time? Does the Dirty Bubble have a Mabel costume? Lunch! <laughs> we may never know the answer, Mabel, but one thing's for sure. There's more to you than meets the eye. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Everyone knows SpongeBob is Squidward's next door neighbor. Do you have to knock so loudly? Sorry, neighbor. But what's wrong with this picture? Where in the world is SpongeBob's house? <laughs> Here, <laughs> the pineapple's back. But where's Squidward's house? Let's see. Did someone push it somewhere else? <gasps> or do these houses have minds of their own? File this one under I for impossible. Friendly resident doctor or medical maniac? Are you ready for your treatment? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Whether it's a case of the suds or a broken butt, your butt's all better. If you live in Bikini Bottom, chances are you've been treated by this doctor who will call the Purple Doctor Fish. Seriously, we don't even know his real name. I've never seen anything like it. But what we do know, he's a little off. Exhibit A is patience. Medical expert, huh? Tell that to these three patients who were treated by the fishy physician. I'm afraid you'll never puff again. <laughs> Wrong. We actually ran out of staples and had to use a glue stick. Wronger. So I'm gonna be okay, Doc? Well, if you don't want to take my word for it, let's just check your chart. Oh no, this is terrible! So wrong. Looks like these patients need a second opinion. The doctor's office is a horrible, horrible place! And what kind of practicing doctor doesn't wear gloves or even shoes? That's disgusting. But that's just the beginning. It gets much worse. Don't touch me! Exhibit D. Hospital horrors. We have a special treatment for you. <laughs> Here he's seen administering cruel and unusual treatments. Misusing medical supplies. Yes, everyone needs to relax. And worst of all, refusing treatment to weenies. I think you guys want that hospital. Weenie a general! Good thing he's a doctor, because this is one sick fish. Come and check out the carnage. It's actually quite entertaining. So how has he never been caught or stripped of his medical license? Maybe this nameless doctor doesn't exist at all. Batten down the hatches because we have a theory that might just blow your mind. For a doctor so terrible at treating his own patients, how is he so good at treating pets, specifically snails? All the doctor is saying is that your snail is still in the intensive care unit. This is definitely a snail. Uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street. Wait, did you catch that? Uh, we're with the pet hospital. He actually admits he's from the pet hospital, which leads us to Exhibit C, the snail doctor. Enter Dr. Gil Gilliam, SDE and SE. Snail disease expert and snail expert. A trusted vet who diffused the great mad snail disease scare of Bikini Bottom. Did someone say mad snail disease? Notice anything familiar about him? Take a closer look. Closer 
closer, he bears a striking resemblance to the purple doctor fish. Coincidence? Perhaps. But what about his voice? Mad snail disease? That's not what I'm saying at all. Mad snail disease? That's not what I'm saying at all. The same face, the same voice, and the same glasses? Are they the same fish? Is this nameless purple doctor's true identity, Dr. Gil Gilliam? Are the purple scales just a clever disguise? There's only one problem. The purple doctor fish has fins, and Gilliam has hands. Hold it right there, Doc. If SpongeBob can wear fake arms to make him look buff, couldn't Gilliam wear fake purple fins to complete his disguise? There's no way to know for sure, unless he forgets to wear his fins. How in the name of Neptune does the purple doctor fish suddenly have orange hands? That's right, you've been caught orange-handed, Gil. So what's the disguise for? Burglary? Arson? Or maybe... Get him, boy! Piracy. Pretty gruesome, huh? One doctor impersonating another doctor, impersonating a pirate? What's it all for, Doc? We may never know the true motives behind your secret life, but rest assured, we're on to you. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Think these are ordinary glass helmets? Well, think again! How is SpongeBob able to blow a bubble through solid glass? Stranger yet, how can Sandy reach this whistle to her mouth without removing her helmet? And Patrick even eats an apple right through his helmet. Much better! File this one under you for, uh, hidden cash, sabotage, and supernatural abilities? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. This is Nat Peterson, the first Bikini Bottom pastor slash bus driver. Sir, stand behind the white line, please. Most know him as an upstanding fish with a heart of gold. Hey, pal, you just blowing from stupid town? But don't be fooled. This bottom feeder has a dark past. That's right. He was caught in the biggest underwater fast food scandal in history. Paid Nat to eat your chum so you'd quit your constant complaining. Should have known! To crabs, the case was open and shut. But what else is fishy about Peterson? Exhibit A, hidden cash. To the public, Peterson lives a modest life in the Bikini Bottom trailer park, but he appears to be hiding a convenient amount of cash for buying eccentric headwear. I'll give you $1,000 for the stench vision goggles. I'll give you $100,000 in cash for said hat. Hats? Goggles? Sounds like someone will drop a lot of dough for a clever disguise. I told you he was on to us. Which leads us to... Exhibit B, sabotage. Whenever a Krusty Krab employee's in trouble, Nat Peterson is on the scene. We're out of control, try! Not convinced? Who was there when SpongeBob was stranded in rock bottom? We need to get back to Bikini Bottom. Oh, well. When Squidward was humiliated by his arch enemy, and when Krabs was duped into a fake wedding, the answer, Peterson, Peterson, and you guessed it, Peterson. But hold your seahorses, because things are about to get even stranger. Exhibit C, the supernatural. That's right, Peterson might not be your average fish. Take a look at this traffic footage of Peterson flipping an entire boat, and that's just the beginning. Here he's seen shape-shifting into a human hand. Is that connected to him carrying this human leg? But wait, take a closer look at the crowd. Is that a second Nat Peterson? And who's this lurking across from Nat Peterson? Another Nat Peterson. Just how many Nat Petersons are there? Say, Nat, do you have any friends? No. Dark secrets, evil plans, and now unnatural abilities? What are you, Nat Peterson? We may never know the truth, but one thing's for sure. We're afraid, very afraid. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. 
If Bikini Bottom's underwater and rain is also water, how can it be raining in Bikini Bottom? That's not all. Clouds and thunder in the ocean? File this forecast under F for fishy. Bikini Bottom, a peaceful city or hidden within? Is there one fish on the edge? Bring it on, old man! This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Meet Harold, your average underwater mountaineer, fashion enthusiast, and dedicated Love World employee. Oh, no! He may appear harmless, but behind the gills could lie a ticking time bomb. What's so suspicious, you ask? Look! Look! Exhibit A, his appetite in Bikini Bottom, where you find food, you'll probably find Harold. Can I have some ketchup? Oh, here you go. He's just a hungry fish, right? Or is this a clue to how dangerous he really is? He's a monster! Oh. Just look at how much this guy eats. A king size ultra crabby supreme with the works, double batter fried on a stick. Sweet mother of pearl, Harold, control yourself. Look at them eating that garbage. And what kind of fish? Eats another fish? <laughs> we'll tell you what kind of fish, the predator kind of fish. Can't you see he's gonna kick my butt? Just look at those sharp pointed teeth. Those are built for more than biting just Krabby Patties. One thing's for sure, you don't wanna come between this fish and his next meal. Which brings us to Exhibit B, his temper. Quit shoving. The only thing that matches Harold's appetite is his uncontrollable temper. Seriously, this is one unstable fish. No, don't get near it. Oh, the pity of it all. Ever notice that whenever a fight breaks out, Harold is in the thick of it? What did you say, punk? Big meaty claws. It seems like anything can trigger a tantrum. But there's one thing that really sets him off. Hi there, young people. A nice day today. The elderly. I agree! If you're over the hill, there's a good chance Harold's coming for you. Bring it on, old man! What? Could you be any slower? <laughs> and he's not afraid to bring back up. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? So is Harold a disturbed maniac preying on poor elderly victims? Stop the madness, man! Or is the true victim Harold himself? You brought this on yourself, Harold. I did not, Harold. Yes, you did, Harold. Harold, I did not. Exhibit C, Boo Boo Keys. During the notorious Bubble Buddy witch hunt... That bubble's gotta go. Pop the bubble! Harold had an emotional breakdown when he was reminded of his childhood imaginary friend. Haven't you ever had a very special friend? Boo Boo Keys! We love you! But imaginary friends are not accepted in Bikini Bottom. So whatever happened to Boo Boo Keys? Is it somehow connected to Harold's unreasonable and uncontrollable anger? Is it related to the way he eats so aggressively? Sick. And does it all have something to do with Harold's intense hatred of old people? Bring it on, old man! In the end, maybe Bikini Bottom's most notorious tough guy is really just a big softy who misses his imaginary friend. Boo boo keys! Boo boo keys! Boo boo keys! Or maybe he's just a lunatic. You brought this on yourself, Harold. I did not, Harold. Yes, you did, Harold. Harold, I did not. We may never know what makes this time bomb tick, but one things for sure. This time bomb's ticking. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. This is Gary the Snail. You probably recognize his iconic pink shell with a red swirl and blue spots. But what's this? Gary, what are you doing here? A blue swirl and red spots? Explain yourself, Gary. Ah! Is this an imposter Gary? Or is the real Gary hiding something? File this one under W for what the barnacles is going on. Somewhere in Bikini Bottom is a fish with a secret he'll take to the grave. The tide's coming in! <laughs> this is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. 
fun day at the beach? Don't be so sure, because riding the waves is one bizarre fish. <laughs> Enter Scooter, everyone's favorite lovable beach bum, with a thing for ripped pants. You still got it, dude! Most would say he's a charming fish. That was awesome! But there's something not quite right about Scooter. Exhibit A, his accent. Scooter is best known for his iconic surfer accent. Oh, oh no! But as soon as he throws on a suit and tie, the accent is gone. Save it for the big brainstorming meeting. And it's all business. So what are you, Scooter? A surfer? Oh, oh no! A businessman? We are perfectly positioned for our marketing to be number one across the business sector. Or maybe a big, fat liar. Come on, we gotta get out of here. But that's nothing compared to Exhibit B, the incident. Let's go back in time to what should have been a quaint and quiet Leif Erikson day. It's Leif Erikson day! Which quickly got out of hand when Scooter was buried in the sand and left at the mercy of the high tide. The tide's coming in! Oh! We know what you're thinking. A lagoon underwater? Yeah, we read the comments, and we'll get back to that. But back to Scooter. The poor, defenseless fish buried in the sand as the tide washed over him. Thanks for nothing, Bubble Buddy. Don't just stand there, dude! But that same day, several eyewitnesses saw an apparition that looked remarkably familiar. Reports even claim it spoke. Dude, he made me experience high tide! And oh! then... It vanished. But that wasn't the last we'd see of Scooter, not by a long shot. Exhibit C, the undead. Even after this incident, Scooter has been seen all over town, blending in with the living fish. But if you watch closely, you'll see that there could be something paranormal happening. In this footage of SpongeBob tying up beachgoers, Scooter can be spotted three times, each time fishier than the last. First, we see him in the crowd eating ice cream. Then, only a few seconds later, he's suddenly way over here, all by himself. But still, a meager 1.27 seconds later, even after being tied up, he's seen back in the crowd, as if he'd been there all along. And wait. There's even more. I bury myself alive! What are the odds that when Mr. Krabs is buried the same way Scooter was, Scooter would be watching in the crowd, and then, mere seconds later, gone. Vanished right before our eyes. Maybe seeing another sea dweller buried the same way he was hit a little too close to home for this fish. Two accents. We are perfectly positioned for our marketing to be number one across the business sector. One tragic demise and a paranormal return? What does it all add up to? Don't just stand there, dude! Is this multi-accented fish really haunting Bikini Bottom? The truth is, we'll never know. But one thing's for sure, he's out there. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Goo Lagoon, the perfect place to swim, surf, or just lay on the beach. What a beautiful day. But how can there even be a lagoon underwater? Ah! Maybe Goo Lagoon's actually made of goo. Maybe it's some sort of strange magic. Or maybe... Due to the dissolution of salt deposits, it has a much higher salinity than the surrounding seawater, causing it to have greater density. You said it, pal. File this one under P for pretty smart, huh? Deep under the ocean, if you listen carefully, you might just hear the cry of one mysterious fish. This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. It's no secret that Bikini Bottom has been the home to more than one unfortunate event. But what do all these catastrophes have in common? They all seem to have one unlucky victim. Fred the Fish. My leg! My leg! And according to Fred himself, the reason he breaks his leg is because of Nurse Bazooka. I'm in love with the nurse. Me? But if you think the mystery of Fred's been solved, you're sadly mistaken. Because despite his beautiful singing voice, It's the tastiest sandwich in the sea. 
Skibbity bean about a moon about a daddy now, yeah! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's something off about Fred. Exhibit A Different Appearances. Think you know Fred? Did you know that he's a high-end spatula salesman? No, touchy the least spatula. But sometimes he's a janitor. Or a cameraman. Or a flag twirler. Sometimes he's green. Sometimes he's blue. Sometimes he's purple. Sometimes he has fins. Sometimes he has toes. And sometimes he's a cowboy. Does he have his own army of Freds? Still think you know Fred? Let's move on to Exhibit B, his leg. Most thought Fred was simply unlucky or just had a weak leg. leg. Until shocking new evidence revealed, Fred has a giant crush on Nurse Bazooka. Sponge bath time. So we may know why Fred hurts his leg, but the real question is how? How does Fred know where to be when the city's set on fire? Or when SpongeBob will cause a mass traffic pileup? Is he always watching, looking for potential danger? Could he be the one causing the mayhem? All so he can hurt his leg. Yeah. You may be shocked to learn that according to our extensive research, fish don't even have legs. Let that sink in for a second. But it's not just this mysterious leg of his. How far is Fred willing to go to see the object of his fixation? Well, keep your square pants on. Because it gets worse. Exhibit C, obsessions. Deliberately breaking your leg so you can visit your crush is unhealthy and even downright obsessive. But this isn't his first fixation. He was also a known fanatic of professional jellyfisher Kevin the Sea Cucumber. He even went as far as to live in this pit just to wait for Kevin. Kevin's back! Obsessed with Kevin the Cucumber, obsessed with Nurse Bazooka, who will Fred be obsessed with next? Take a look at the way he's dressed. If that looks familiar, that's because it's almost the exact same outfit as SpongeBob SquarePants. In fact, these two seem to have a history of stealing each other's pants. Nice outfit. My leg! Oh, my pants! Could this mean Fred's next obsession? Is SpongeBob himself? We may never know just what exactly is going on with Fred, but one thing's for sure, he'll probably hurt his leg again, and again, and again. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Mrs. Puff may seem innocent, but we have a statement on record that makes her one suspicious fish. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name. No. Not again. Did you catch that? Not again. Who are you really, Puff? And what's the deal with this picture on your wall? Is that a picture of this exact moment? I've got to end this thing before it begins. And here's another one. And in that picture is another picture. And another. And another. And another. File this one under P for puzzling. Throughout the history of Bikini Bottom, researchers have been baffled by one simple question. Hello! Who is Old Man Jenkins? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. At first glance, the evidence seems clear. Don't you want to kiss the seat of my pants? Old Man Jenkins is a former farmer turned sailor. I'm glad I gave up farming! Turned cannonball. But upon further investigation, only one thing is clear. Nothing is as it seems. Exhibit A, body doubles. We set out to investigate Old Man Jenkins, but our investigation led us to five different fish, all claiming to be Old Man Jenkins. You've got a hole in Farmer Jenkins' grain silo. That's it. That's right, five different files. Old Man Jenkins! I have no idea. On five different old men. It's old man Jenkins in his jalopy. Howdy, Mrs. K! Each with evidence that he is the true old man Jenkins. You ain't old man Jenkins! What did I miss? Where's old man Jenkins? 
<laughs> so which one is the real Old Man Jenkins? And more importantly, why do they all claim to be Old Man Jenkins? Well, further investigation revealed more than we could have ever imagined. Exhibit B, Suspicious Behavior. Watch the following scene closely. Notice one version of Old Man Jenkins casually floating in the Krusty Krab just before the customers leave so crabs can be alone to protect the secret formula all night. But maybe he wasn't as alone as he thought. I'll be waiting for him. <laughs> Take a closer look. Old Man Jenkins never actually left the Krusty Krab. Instead, he could have been lurking in the shadows all night. And Krabs was none the wiser. I'll be waiting right here. <laughs> and that's not the only case of breaking and entering. When Plankton tried to steal the formula, this old man Jenkins was even caught inside a police evidence locker. Hello! And he wasn't the only old man Jenkins. Hello! What are two men with the same identity doing on the inside of the same police evidence locker? Are they the evidence? Who's been pinching all these geezers? Or are they trying to destroy some sort of evidence? Yeah! And if these two are working together, is it possible that all the old man Jenkinses are working together? An elite team of old man Jenkinses working in the shadows of restaurants and police stations? But why? What are they hiding? I'm okay! Exhibit C, immortality. Let's go back in time to a time where Eugene Krabs and Sheldon Plankton were just young lads working on the original secret formula. Now that's a handsome looking burger. You said it, old chum. Who was there to taste the first attempt at a recipe? Old Man Jenkins. Yeah! Let's go back even further. When Krabs found his first penny, who was lurking just behind him? Old Man Jenkins. And back even further, when young Krabs and Plankton went to school and first learned about formulas, who was their teacher? Old Man Jenkins. Three versions of Old Man Jenkins, each spotted in the distant past. But if this is the distant past, shouldn't they be much younger? Instead, each version looks exactly as old in the past as they do in the present. Abandoned ship! Abandoned Let's recap. One was hiding in the Krusty Krab when Krabs was protecting the secret formula. Two were in this evidence locker when Plankton tried to steal the secret formula. And three were in the distant past when Krabs and Plankton were first coming up with the secret formula. So who are these five men known as Old Man Jenkins? What do they want with the secret formula? And how do they never age? Do they have their own formula? A formula for immortality. I thought this was a restaurant, not a gutter mouth convention. We may never know the secrets of this strange faction, but one thing's for sure. They're really, really old. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. A Krabby Patty is supposedly the most delicious sandwich under the sea. The only people who don't like a Krabby Patty have never tasted one. But if it's under the sea, how do they get tomatoes, onions, or lettuce, all foods that are usually found on dry land. With lettuce, cheese, onions, tomatoes, ketchup, mustard, pickles, and top bun together in that order. File this one under C for classified. Oh, and because it's under the C, see what I did there? Because it's filed under C. <clears throat> yeah. Strange behavior, suspicious activity, and a fierce passion for... Chocolate! This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Meet Tom, a local movie star. It's true, John. This isn't my real hair. With a tragic history of butt injuries. Oh, man. It itches. But under his perfect hair and behind those oddly yellow eyes, something's not quite right about Tom. Chocolate! Exhibit A, chocolate. Tom's best known for his intense emotional breakdown at the very mention of chocolate. Did you say chocolate? A breakdown so extreme. Chocolate! It scared the barnacles. Chocolate! 
out of these two anonymous salesmen. And Sponge, <clears throat> I mean, one of our sources, claims that chocolate isn't the only food that sets Tom off. Here we see him flipping out over his diet Dr. Kelp. How am I supposed to eat this pizza without my dress? And why is he suddenly orange? Here he's losing his temper over tiny details. You asked for a couple of ice cubes in your drink, and I only put in one! You what? And overreacting about potato salad? It took us three days to make that potato salad. Three days! Well, Tom, we did extensive research on dozens of potato salad recipes, only to find that not one of them takes three days. No, something's just not right about Tom. Now that I've got you right where I want you, I'd like to buy all your chocolate. Which brings us to Exhibit B, Strange Behavior. Tom's behavior may seem normal at first. Behavior like going to a concert. Now or helping the elderly. But take a closer look at these activities. While the crowd is going wild, why isn't Tom cheering, or smiling, or even moving? Instead, he's just staring unblinkingly at SpongeBob, like an unfeeling maniac. Helping the elderly seems like an admirable deed, right? But why is he disguising his voice? Hey, seniors, let's open these windows so the world can see your nice white clothes. Nice white clothes. Nice white clothes. Still not convinced that Tom's up to something? Well, then explain to us why he was caught attempting to escape from Inferno Island. Turn the ship around! A maximum security prison where Bikini Bottom sends its worst criminals. Who said that? The official reason he was sent to prison is unknown. But after conducting a background check, we learn that Tom may be more sinister than anyone imagined. Exhibit C, suspicious activity. That's right, a close look at Tom shows us that he's performed some heinous acts in the past while working as a bartender. Here's your drink, sir. Tom was caught on camera, actively sabotaging SpongeBob SquarePants. What in the name of Neptune makes this drink so heavy? You may think that SpongeBob's simply too weak to lift a glass of juice. Well then, explain this, or this, or this. In fact, it's part of SpongeBob's job to lift drinks every day. Here you go. And who puts a drink on top of somebody's hand anyway? Isn't it possible that Tom deliberately made the drink so heavy? and purposefully set it on SpongeBob's hand. And if you think that's bad, you won't believe what's next. Tom is believed to be a key instigator of the infamous Bubble Buddy Witch Hunt. Bubble! 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 During which he accused Bubble Buddy of crimes like arson. He burned our crop! Poisoning. He poisoned our water supply! and biological warfare. Then delivered a plague onto our houses! Three claims that were each proven false. Keeping SpongeBob captive. Slandering Bubble Buddy's good name. He poisoned our water supply! And reading a pamphlet about evil. We may never know why Tom is so sinister, but one thing's for sure, the man's crazy for chocolate. Chocolate! And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Everybody knows Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen. Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen. He was number one. But was Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen really number one? Then why does this grave say Smitty Werbenman Jensen instead of Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen? Could the real number one actually be Smitty Werbenman Jensen and not Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen? Then who exactly is Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen? And what's his connection to Smitty Werbenman Jensen? File this one under S for Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen. After all of our investigations, you may think Bikini Bottom is a suspicious place. Oh, but beneath the murky depths of this strange underwater city oh. are even murkier depths. This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. During the course of our investigations, we've made countless shocking revelations, but we believe we haven't even scratched the surface of this ocean full of secrets. Here are just a few of the suspicious fish lurking in Bikini Bottom. <laughs> Exhibit A, flats. 
We all know Flats the Flounder, an expert square dancer. We got square dancing. With a talent for chest hair calligraphy. But what does he have against SpongeBob? I'm SpongeBob. From the very moment they met. I'm going to kick your butt. Flats made SpongeBob an enemy. Can't you see he's going to kick my butt? There's something wrong with this picture. What if we told you that this isn't the first time these two met? In fact, they knew each other well enough that SpongeBob invited him to this Texas party. So why the facade? I'm SpongeBob. Who exactly are they trying to fool? And could there be another reason for Platz's grudge against SpongeBob? A reason from even deeper in their past. That's right. Long before this supposed first meeting, SpongeBob hid in Flats's bathroom and trapped him using a high-tech net launcher. Was this their true first meeting? Maybe the day SpongeBob decided to go fishing was the day Flats decided to hold a grudge. But Flats is just the beginning. Exhibit B, this mysterious little girl, the daughter of Norma. Get in the car, kids. You've seen her around town, always acting innocent and sweet. Mommy, what is that thing? As if she has nothing to hide. <laughs> but tell us then, why does a child need to attend a driving class? But what's even stranger? In this class, she actually looks older. Does she somehow age faster than the sea creatures around her? Is she a time traveler? Could this be a version of her from the future come back to warn her younger self about something? This raises more questions than it answers. Just like Exhibit C, Dr. Manowar. Who could forget poor Dr. Manowar? The guy who got stung by Big Lenny and lived. But hold your sympathy, because even Dr. Manowar seems to be hiding something. Doesn't he look familiar? Let's look back at one of our earlier investigations. An investigation regarding the purple doctor fish. The same face, the same voice, and the same glasses? Are they the same fish? You may have thought this case was already closed, but take another look at Dr. Manowar. Is it possible that Dr. Manowar is yet another disguise of Dr. Gil Gilliams? Just how many doctors do you need to be, Gil? Flats. I'm gonna kick your butt. A strange little girl. Mommy, what is that thing? And now a new lead in the case of the purple Dr. Fish. We may never know why Bikini Bottom holds so many shady fish. But one thing's for sure, there are plenty more where that came from. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Bikini Bottom has so many secrets that even the rocks are hiding something. It's a rock! A rock! If these are just ordinary rocks, then how is SpongeBob able to drive this rock? Especially when he doesn't have a license, or even a steering wheel. And that's not all. Remember Rocky? He's got nerves of steel. The champion of the 102nd running of the snails. Well, we've uncovered startling new evidence that suggests that Rocky is not a snail. Patrick, that's a rock. No, he's not a snail at all. How does a rock win a race? Are the rocks in Bikini Bottom alive? Rock buddy! File this one under W for... Wait a minute. You know the legend. But it's time to uncover the haunting truth about the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> this is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. All who live in Bikini Bottom have heard the tale of the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> a notorious flirt. You like ponies, I like ponies! Is that a wedding ring? With the ability to distort time, space, and reality itself. <laughs> So sure, he may seem like a run-of-the-mill spirit, but don't be fooled, because this apparition may not be what he appears. Exhibit A, Suspicious Origins. The legend of the Flying Dutchman strikes fear into the hearts of children everywhere. When he died, they used his body as a window display. Now he haunts the seven seas because he was never put to rest. A haunting story, no doubt. But is it true 
Or could it be a shameless lie? There are two problems with this story. Number one, we're not convinced that being used as a fashion display would even upset the Dutchman at all. In fact, all evidence suggests that the Dutchman loves fashion. Looking good. He's obsessed with his fashionable dining sock. He always carries his name brand Souls bag. He's precious about his beard. My beard! And he even has a perfume department on board his ship. The perfume department! Number two. What if we told you we have the Dutchman on record, blatantly contradicting his own origin story? Hmm, it's a little torn. Of course, it was the shirt I was buried in. He was never put to rest. The shirt I was buried in. Never put to rest. How could he have been buried in that shirt if he was supposedly never buried at all? So is this origin story just a lie? Mere propaganda used by Flying Dutchman apologist to justify his horrific ghostly deeds? Which brings us to Exhibit B, Davy Jones. All who are familiar with the legend know that the Flying Dutchman is a servant of Davy Jones. I'm here to escort you to the resting place of all bad undersea folk. Davy Jones Locker! But if this is Davy Jones' locker, then where exactly is Davy? And what's the deal with all these socks? Davy Jones works out a lot. These are his socks. A likely story with only one problem. This is the last known sighting of Davy Jones. A skeleton in the Flying Dutchman's closet. Excuse me, Davy. So whose socks are they really? Who do you know that has a strange affinity for socks? <laughs> Give me back my socks! Sometimes I like to wear this little sock. Ah, it's a good thing I found my dining sock. Let's break this down. Here's a guy who loves socks. There's a bunch of socks in this locker. And the owner of the locker is a skeleton in this guy's closet? What kind of sicko would go this far just for a place to store his socks? Maybe a lonely sicko. <laughs> Exhibit C, crippling loneliness. Isn't it strange that SpongeBob has encountered the Flying Dutchman over ten times? Who dares backsass the Flying Dutchman? That would be me, SpongeBob Backsass Pants. Stop and ask yourself, how many encounters with powerful undead ghostly psychopomps have you had in your life? One, maybe two, tops? Do you even know what a psychopomp is? But it seems like the Dutchman actually goes out of his way to hang out with SpongeBob. Ah! He shows up randomly to teach him how to tie knots. The pencil knot! He drops his anchor right on SpongeBob's house, supposedly by accident. And on multiple occasions, he tries to make SpongeBob part of his ghostly crew. Could that really be a coincidence? Or is it possible that the Dutchman isn't so evil? Could all the haunting really just be a cry for help? Maybe all he ever wanted was a friend. Now that's the Flying Dutchman I know! After all, what good is eternity on a ghost ship if you have no one to share it with? What good is your own personal perfume department if there's no one to comment on how good you smell? And what good's a dining sock if you're dining alone? No one but the skeleton in your closet to keep you company. Excuse me, Davy. So behind all the horrifying imagery, scary stories, and implications of foul play, the Flying Dutchman might just be a lonely pirate looking for a friend. We may never know the truth, but one thing's for sure. One thing's for sure. One thing. One. Forget it. And now, a bikini bottom bonus mystery. We all remember this infamous eyelash sweater. What's this thing made of? Eyelashes! But we were recently informed that it appears to be SpongeBob's eyebrows that are missing. And he only had six eyelashes anyway. So what exactly is this sweater made of? And what about this one? I made this one with my tears. How can there be a sweater made out of water if they're already underwater? File this one under W for why don't you just make a normal sweater? Retired superheroes? Wake up, you old coop! Huh? Or scheming geriatric masterminds? Evil. This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. 
Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are the very definition of heroic. They've got the powers, gadgets, mixes our time machine, and super undies to prove it. Power's all in the costume! But could it be that these two retired, Sammy retired, do gooders are actually the masterminds of a decades long conspiracy built on mind control and criminal collusion? Exhibit A, Fading Fame. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy have a taste for the trappings of fame, the endless merchandise, the adoring fans, hey, a mermaid man. the run of the nursing home. But it's still not enough for these glory hounds. It seems they won't rest until they've exploited every possible angle of their faded fame. The new adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Another superhero reboot? Really? And discount grubbing at the Krusty Krab? Don't you got a living legend discount or something? Living legend? Get over yourself, Barnacle Boy. Yeah. They'll even buddy up with Man Ray, their supposed nemesis, and shill for a local grease joint just to make it on TV again. <laughs> Commercial? But how far would they go for a taste of their former glory? To see adoring crowds following their every move once again? Would they go to the brink of villainy? Bring it on! Exhibit B, hypnosis. Does the M on that belt really stand for Mermaid Man? Some say it stands for Mini. You got it set to M for Mini. Some say it stands for Wumbo. When it should be set to W for Wumbo. But could it stand for Mind Control? Listen carefully. With the ability to assemble and charge the creatures of the deep. That's right. Mermaid Man has the power to control the citizens of Bikini Bottom. Would you trust this merman with your free will? Yeah! In this chilling footage, they use Bikini Bottom seniors as brainwashed minions, forcing them to attack their fellow fish. Sea creatures, attack! Here, they drive dozens into known food safety nightmare, the Chum Bucket. Look at their cold, dazed eyes, a clear sign of mind control. But does the brainwashing end there? How else are they broadcasting their message? Could they be hypnotizing their audience? Avert your eyes. Resist the pull of the swirling screen. For Neptune's sake, look away! So if these puppet masters have a captive audience, could they also have captive enemies? Man Ray and the Dirty Bubbles! Exhibit C, Collusion. Shocking evidence suggests that Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy don't just fight evil, they enable it. There has to be danger. Ask yourself this. How is Man Ray in peak physical condition after all these years? Maybe it's good genes. Maybe it's his slimming suit. Or maybe it's because Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy have preserved him in tartar sauce, hiding him away in their marmalade to unleash at the opportune moment, perhaps, and take a closer look at that tickle belt. That's the tickle belt Mermaid Man used on you in episode number 17. It has the power to render Man Ray utterly helpless, a giggling heap you'll never escape. I'll never get out of here wearing this belt! Unless Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy let him out. Because look, when Man Ray blasts buildings to smithereens, conquers all of Bikini Bottom, and threatens world domination, world domination, he's still wearing the belt. So Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy could halt his harrowing rampage with the press of a button. But instead, they endanger countless fish and the very future of Bikini Bottom, just so they can play the heroes. Gotcha. And Man Ray isn't the only pawn in their twisted tableau. Enter the Dirty Bubble. <laughs> That's right. The infamous Dirty Bubble is under the employ of none other than Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Seem far-fetched? Let's break this down. The Dirty Bubble regenerates from the Dirty Bubble Wand. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are in possession of the Dirty Bubble Wand. So if the Dirty Bubble appears to threaten innocent fish... Make him eat dirt! Is it because Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are the ones who unleash him? <laughs> Scared, boys. Call this bubble what you want, but I think we know who's really dirty in this picture. So could the heroes who rescue Bikini Bottom time and time again 
actually be the scheming puppeteers who put the city in danger in the first place? Now, wait just a darn minute. Who's to stop them from unleashing a wave of nefarious villains on the gentle citizens of Bikini Bottom just so they can have something to do? Stay on the path of evil! Well, kid, maybe this is why they say never meet your heroes. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. The Krusty Krab is rightly famous for its Krabby Patties. In all their greasy goodness, the menu is filled with Krabby Patties and tasty marine tidbits. But what's this? A golden loaf? What's in a golden loaf? What does it taste like? Is it sweet or savory? Is there real gold in it? Why does it cost just two bucks? And what's in the sauce? Has anyone ever ordered one before? Why even bother putting it on the menu? Does anyone even know how to make a golden loaf? Pile this one under J or just order a Krabby Patty. He seems like a humble hometown reporter, but is he just on air or putting on airs? Best of luck to you. This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Roving reporter Perch Perkins is the comforting, constant voice of his community. Perch Perkins here. But is Perch plucky, perky, and prospering? Or is there something jagged and ugly under his smiling face? <laughs> Exhibit A, a changed fish. Perch Perkins started out in the small time oh, with play-by-plays at local sporting events. Sure, he was a little shabby, a little absent-minded. Gotta get some mustard on there. Oh. First up. That was part of his folksy charm. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. But as his career picked up and he moved in front of the camera, wow. fame changed Perch. He slicked and shellacked his hair into a camera-ready oval. Yes! But his on-camera makeover didn't stop there. He swapped out his scales to match the fashion flipping from green to orange to purple. And check out that chin. These days, it's smooth as a bull shark's behind. And that dorsal fin must have had too many rough edges for smooth-talking Perch Perkins because he trimmed it off once he hit the big leagues. Had a little work done, Perch? Yes! But this fickle fish didn't just change on the outside. Yeah. Exhibit B, spoiled fish. Sure, Perch Perkins made some big changes to get camera ready. Can you blame a guy? It's just in. But are these changes more than scales deep? Has Perch Perkins become a prima donna? This is mutiny. These days, he'll stomp off his own set. I know it's a slow news day, but come on. Too important for a good old salt of the sea story, Perch? Everyone else puts on their pants one fin at a time, but not pantless Perch Perkins. All he wears is a snappy blazer, because that's all the camera shows. It seems he's gotten too big for his britches, literally. Hey, doofus! Huh? Just watch him yank that microphone away from his interviewees. Yes, siree. And We're shove subjects out of frame. This is just a teaser. Seems like Perch thinks he's Neptune's gift to news. Once a chipper cheerleader. Here comes Larry doing his trademark layback. Nowadays, Perch will call his viewers bottom feeders. Hey, all you bottom feeders. He'll call his guests know-it-alls. Miss Cheeks, as Bikini Bottom's resident know-it-all, he'll shame this lonely octopus for his choice of date. The saddest display of loneliness it has ever been my displeasure to report. Are we still talking about Squidward here, Perch? Because all evidence suggests that Perch Perkins, the nosy news narcissist, the deep-sea diva... It's just in. ...is in a total downward spiral. Exhibit C, floundering. Perch Perkins has come a long way from chomping down hot dogs at Goo Lagoon. He's a culinary kingmaker. Bikini Bottom sensational new upscale eatery, Les Chambaquette. Million dollar mogul. Crabby conspiracy whistleblower. First I break into the safe and... <laughs> Wait, is it live? He's even covered news in the buzzing metropolis, New Kelp City. Panic in the streets of New Kelp City. But is this top dog of TV news spiraling out of control? How else do you explain leaping into oh, yes. the highly polluted Goo Lagoon mid-broadcast? This is Perch Perkins and I'm soaking wet. 
back to you. Newsflash, Perch. That's not normal. And fans of Perch might find this footage shocking. The second unaffected person is in this dumpster. Care to comment, sir, on the chaos? Perch Perkins, how did you know I was in here? I was napping in this dumpster when you snuck in seeking refuge. A plea for publicity or a cry for help? Has he completely lost touch or is he calling out for connection? I finally feel like I'm part of something! I belong! Could a return to his small town roots be enough to pull Perch Perkins back from the brink? Why is the local news always such rubbish? So who is the real Perch Perkins? The smooth, smarmy newscaster? The demanding diva? The off-the-rails reporter barely holding it together? Or the hometown hero in headphones just yearning for the simple life? And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. In this footage, Mr. Krabs calls Plankton a shrimp. So long, shrimp! But look at this actual shrimp. He's the size of a normal fish. So why would Mr. Krabs call Plankton, who's legitimately tiny, a shrimp? Perhaps this is a jumbo shrimp? And if so, how small are normal-sized shrimp? As small as Plankton? File this one under S for show us more shrimp. Cultured cosmopolitan living her best life? Or secret sadist lurking in the front row? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Norma Wretched's always in the know, following the latest fads and the hottest celebrities. Oh, look at those gorgeous wrinkles. When she's not at her first, second, third, fourth, or fifth job, she's snagging seats at Bikini Bottom's coolest galas and gigs. But is there something abnormal about Norma? Exhibit A, On Edge. Under that placid smile, Norma's no mild-mannered minnow. She'll fly into a frenzy at the very mention of a monster. Monster! That may seem reasonable, but ask yourself this. Would you be horrified at the very sight of a squirrel? Get in the car, kids! At a mere snail? Meow? <laughs> at the latest dance craze? Tommy! Ah, my son! I'm just doing the craze. And what kind of person goes berserk at the sight of a flawless tan? Maybe someone with something to hide. Exhibit B, cold-blooded. Norma might seem cheerful and charming. Sure, she gives out free cookies. Free sample? Cookie! Hosts a local hug fest. Aw, does someone need a hug? And has a bit of a sweet We're tooth. We're selling chocolate bars. Would you like to buy one? I'll take one. But is she really a soft-hearted swimmer? You might look to Nurse Norma for helping and healing. Now open one. Yet hospital records show that her so-called care took this snail plankton hybrid from healthy to bandaged and bedridden. Carrie, the doctor says there's nothing more we can do. And take a look at those tools. To panic for basic sanitation, Nurse Wretched? Innocent medical errors made in a fevered frenzy, perhaps? Or perhaps she's using her hysterics as a cover for something far crueler. Could it be that this faint-hearted fish actually has has ice in her veins? <laughs> How rude! Ask yourself that when, under the guise of fin flipping fright, Norma uses her own baby carriage as a battering ram and then goes back for more. And take a closer look at this footage. She threatens to steal food from her own baby. I could take your formula whenever I wanted to, and you couldn't do a thing about it. But why so panic and pain? What is it, Peterson? Is it for power, for personal gain, or for something even sicker? Could it be for Norma's own entertainment? Exhibit C, appetite for agony. Seems like Norma's got the best seats for every spectacle. Even suffering. As this desperate businessman buries himself alive, Norma's leading the cheers from the front row. And while this octopus's face gets slammed repeatedly by a metal door, guess who's watching eagerly from every angle? Norma may like parties, but this is one bash we'd rather skip. Jump on a stick! 
In this shocking footage, she seeks out a snack while waiting for someone to get mauled. Well, all this waiting around for someone to get mauled is making me a bit hungry. Seems like standard fare for this aficionado of anguish. Because while grabbing a patty, Norma's sitting right next to a health inspector just moments before he chokes on a nasty patty. <laughs> But does Nurse Norma spring into action? I don't think so. Seems like she watches the urgent distress of her fellow diner from her front row seat and just keeps chewing. Looks like Norma lucked out with dinner and a show. So is Norma just a skittish socialite? Or is she secretly a connoisseur of cruelty? There's no way to know for sure. But one thing's absolutely certain. Norma is anything but normal. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Delicious Krabby Patties are made fresh to order. One crying Johnny coming up! But even the most perfect patties don't age well. And according to the sacred fry cook oath... That which is fried must be... So how and why is there a giant patty vault full of juicy Krabby Patties in perfect condition? Is this vault somehow preserving the patties? Why stockpile patties that are usually made to order? And has this rule-abiding fry cook broken his oath? I can't let them eat you! No! File this one under you for unlock the vault uncatchable buses, strange accents. What else could be lurking in this town of terror? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Catch the wrong ride out of Glove World, and you'll wind up on a one way bus to Rock Bottom. I want to go home! But is something deeper and darker going on here? Exhibit A Lawlessness. The good fish of Rock Bottom seem totally, completely, unremarkably normal. Picking up snacks, buying bus tickets, doing their business. But is there an undercurrent of crime lurking in the murk? Take another look. The fish around here steal food without a second thought. Hey, that was mine! So you can kiss that kelp nougat crunch goodbye. And newly hatched guppies cut in line willy-nilly around here. That's one bad egg. And are we really supposed to believe that more than 329 fish... I am 300... 29th in line. ...can squeeze into one tiny bus station. That's an underwater fire hazard if I ever saw one. Seems like rule breakers run rampant in rock bottom. But is SpongeBob the only fish who doesn't belong? Exhibit B, odd fish out. Look at the rock bottom fish. Now look at the bikini bottom fish. Now back at the rock bottom fish. Now look at this fish. Seems like this angler fish is more bikini bottom than rock bottom. And how about that accent? Thank you. You're welcome. No rock bottom raspberries here. I can't understand your accent. That's fluent bikini bottom ease. You're welcome. So what's your angle, anglerfish? He looks nothing like the other anglerfish. In fact, it looks like he got dropped off in rock bottom, slapped a lamp on his head, picked up the local accent, and tried to blend in. But why the bluff? Is he in hiding on the lamb? Or is this wannabe anglerfish stranded in rock bottom, just like our scaredy sponge? Exhibit C, trapped. A single road runs through rock bottom, and there's just one buzz stop. But skipping town is no straightforward swim in the sea. Just watch the erratic stops of this bus. And this bus. And this bus. Seems like a lot of buses for one route. A lot of identical buses with identical wonky window patterns. Unless these identical buses are all the same bus. Could it be that one single bus driver is circling through rock bottom for hours on end, revisiting a single bus stop at least 13 times just to taunt his trapped victims? But what kind of bus driver would do such a thing? 
perhaps a bus driver with a shady past, a transit tyrant out for petty vengeance, an uncivil servant by the name of... Nat Peterson. You've seen this unsavory character around town, but noted saboteur and chum bucket conspirator Nat Peterson seems to have trapped multiple fish in the murk of rock bottom, putting the bus in busted. But why leave them high and dry, or rather low and soaked? Why torment them for hours on end? Just look at the rage in his eyes. Could it be that he's seeking revenge? All for a harmless balloon battering? Was this simple slight enough to push Peterson over the edge and down to rock bottom? Why boot this fish off the bus? And just how low will Nat Peterson sink? We'll never truly get to the bottom of rock bottom or reach the depths of Nat's crimes. But one thing's very clear. Don't take that bus. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Land animals have no problem cohabitating with sea critters, as long as they have some way to breathe. If it wasn't for that suit, you couldn't even live down here. Sure, this monster has a bubble to breathe. But what about the other land-loving insects buzzing around Bikini Bottom? Those cockroaches might have tiny patties, but they don't have tiny dive suits. And what about this homicidal fly? Where are all these bugs coming from? And how are they surviving? File this one under H for has this been bugging anyone else? She may seem sweet, but is there something shady behind Michelle's shade? Okay, what's shaking? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Meet Miss Shell. Miss Shell sasses ghosts. There's this great new product called Toothpaste. Miss Shell shushes troublemakers. Miss Shell sells seashells down by the seashore. No, she doesn't. Well, she still seems like quite a plucky old lady. But is there more to Miss Shell than meets the eye? Lonnie, is that you? Exhibit A, seeing double. Decades after her stint as a teacher, how is this old lady still so spry? Is it all the power walking, the steady diet of Krabby Patties, or is it something far stranger? Watch closely. This Michelle is slumping into her vichy swans, while that Michelle sprints through the streets of Bikini Bottom. This Michelle needs a walker, while that Michelle can withstand a towering boat wreck. This Michelle can't find the menu section. Do you know where the menu section is? While that Michelle faced down the Flying Dutchman himself. Seems awfully suspicious. Radically different personalities, rapidly changing abilities. <laughs> Could it be that there's more than one Michelle? Holy smokes! Holy smokes is right, because where there's smoke, there's fire. That's right. It seems Bikini Bottom is home to not one, but two Miss Shells. One elderly, fragile, and hopelessly gullible. But this is a spoon. And another a fiery fish with a penchant for stunts. Oh, yes! Still not convinced? After all, it's an excellent likeness, nearly indistinguishable. Except we've caught the double on camera. Take a look. This Michelle flees from danger. But moments later, back inside the nursing home. Take a look at those boots. Seem familiar? Those are Michelle's signature boots. That's right. The other Michelle is still inside. Or half inside. But if there are two Miss Shells with radically different stunt abilities, wouldn't someone notice? What if someone already has? Exhibit D, cold shoulder. Between the hair, the glasses, and the attitude. I knew it. Miss Shell seems pretty memorable. And she and SpongeBob cross paths again and again. They were in a band together. They learned to drive together. And... She was SpongeBob's kindergarten teacher. That's right. 
She was there in his formative years, ushering him through kindergarten. So why doesn't her old student recognize her? They're right here, lady. Lady? He's got nothing to say to his old teacher. He doesn't even say her name. Hey, Granny, what's shaking? Granny? This is the same sponge who was willing to break his other teacher out of jail. The same sponge who counts his kindergarten classmate as among his closest friends. Only our closest friends. Who the barnacles is SpongeBob SquarePants? I believe you went to kindergarten with him, dear. So why the cold shoulder for Miss Shell? Is it because she shushed him while he was feeling it? You feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Is it because she quit Squidward's marching band before the bubble bowl? Or is it because SpongeBob SquarePants, the chronic teacher's pet, is the only one who sees that this isn't the real Miss Shell? But why cook up a ploy so cunning, so elaborately choreographed, so intricately plotted, that we never see them in the same place? Is it for sinister purposes, or for something far more personal? Exhibit C, Dennis the Menace. Miss Shell's scheme might have selfish or shellfish ends. See what I did there? Could she be trying to bust her long, long, long time boyfriend? Because it seems Dennis is the real menace here. Sure, Miss Shell and Dennis have a long running relationship. They play canasta together, they go out on the town together. I don't do it on purpose! But this is no happily married couple. It's all in the name. Miss Shell, not Mrs. whatever Dennis's last name is. And it looks like Miss Shell's still looking for a ring. She's been spotted leaping for the bride's bouquet at a wedding, but good luck with those wedding bells, Miss Shell, because Dennis is already married. Just like we raised him. It seems Miss Shell has her suspicions. You have been cheated and lied to. I knew it. And rightly so. Because while leading on Miss Shell and maintaining a marriage with Mabel, Dennis has been dining with other ladies. Dennis, you double-crossing cad. So is Miss Shell's double act a way to spy on her no-good boyfriend? A plot to catch out Dennis? We may never untangle the personal lives of these scandalous seniors, but one thing's for sure, don't cross Michelle. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Janet and Marty are two suspicious starfishes. They claim they don't have kids. We don't have a son. These two starfish claim Patrick is their son. But if that's true, then how did Janet and Marty know Patrick's name? Hats for Patrick! <laughs> Was it a good guess? Are they smarter than they seem? Are they stalking Patrick Star? Who are you people? File this one under M. For Marty, I'm scared. He was born with glass bones, paper skin, no. and a shameless craving for cons. It does my heart good to con a couple of class A suckeroonies like those two. <laughs> but who else is he trying to scam? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Known only as the Con Man. This slippery fish seems like a small-time schemer. You two lady killers are too smart to be without one of my patented candy bar bag carrying bags. We'll take 20. But is he running more than simple swindles? Exhibit A, return on investment. It may seem like he's got his con game down, turning a sob story into cold, hard cash. But luckily I'm able to keep myself alive by selling chocolate bars. But is it all worth it? Just how much profit is he making on his chocolate scheme? How much does he have to spend up front to stock crates of candy bars and candy bar bags? Let alone the candy bar bag carrying bags. And that fake medical gear can't come cheap. Between the IV drip, the oxygen mask, the full body bandages, and the heart monitor, looks like the only thing flatlining is his bank account. And to top it off, our con man needs, count them, 
three different houses to pull off this scam. Seems like a lot of overhead, but is he in over his head? Ow. Is this candy bar scam actually running him out of house and house and home? Buying the bags, the medical gear, the houses, all that for a few bucks on the off chance a couple of suckers come by selling chocolate? Good morning, sir. Would you like to buy some chocolate? Something's just not adding up here. He couldn't possibly be turning a profit. Unless he's playing a much bigger game. Exhibit B, impersonation. What do we really know about this con man? He's got purple scales, a rounded fin, a fancy suit, a hat he wears indoors, and most notoriously, a taste for ill-gotten games. <laughs> But wait a minute. Purple scales, rounded fin, fancy suit, indoor hat, taking advantage of honest businessmen. There's just one other fish who fits that description. The health inspector. It's suddenly so clear. What if Mr. Krabs was right the first time? No, loony loofah, he is the imposter. What if the con man actually is impersonating a health inspector to eat for free? A bit of makeup around the mouth, and it's a match. I'm going to need you to bring me one of everything on the menu. One of everything on the menu, huh? Compliments of the Krusty Krab? Sounds like a free feast to me. I just need to try a plain Krabby Patty. A plain Krabby Patty with a side of lies, perhaps. And it seems like our con man even has the perfect cover. The fake inspector has been captured. Here is his picture. If a health inspector comes to your restaurant and he's not this guy, he's real. That's quite an assumption, realistic fish head. Because who says this is the only fake inspector in town? If everyone thinks the imposter's already been caught, who'd be on the lookout for another fake health inspector? It's the perfect crime. Unless Exhibit C, the perfecter crime. How could the con man get away with these blatant scams? How does he stay one step ahead of the authorities? Take a long, hard look at our con man. Have you seen him somewhere else? No? What if we added shades? Now he looks like someone who's always around Bikini Bottom. Someone in a position of authority. Someone nobody would think to question. Someone like... This Bikini Bottom police officer. Looks like this scheme goes all the way to the top. Or all the way to the cops. But why is the con man impersonating a Bikini Bottom police officer? Ask yourself this. How did the con man get away with blatant identity theft? How has he stolen from local establishments? And how has he conned countless chunks? All without drawing the attention of the authorities? Could it simply be that he is the police? Switching identities, misleading the authorities, and using his police status to cover his tracks, to stop any investigations and bury any proof, so that, as far as the cops are concerned, the con man is just a phantom, a rumor, a shadow. As far as the cops are concerned, there is no con man. Happy hunting! Happy hunting, indeed. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. You've been wondering about her since her first moments on screen. So it's time someone asked the big question about Pearl. The question you can't help asking. The one thing you've all been wondering. The huge mystery about Mr. Krabs' beloved daughter. Who is Pearl's? best friend. It seems like Pearl's pals show up one day and vanish the next. Let's hang out! Ugh, I can't. If these are her friends, why aren't they at her sweet 16? Who is Pearl's real BFF? Will she ever find fish she likes who like her back? File this one under B, subfolder F, sub subfolder F for best friends forever. Does this dutiful delivery fish have a sinister secret? This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Have you noticed Norton? No? 
You're not alone. Nobody pays attention to Norton. It's Norton's time to shine! But is he really looking for his time to shine? Or does he want to stay under the radar? Exhibiting. Avoiding contact. It seems Norton will do almost anything to avoid other fish. Sure, he's been spotted in the hustle and bustle of Bikini Bottom, but notice something odd? That's right, he's walking around with his eyes shut. Avoiding eye contact, perhaps? And Norton's response to a daily greeting? I'm Literally running away. He'll even stuff mail in someone's mouth to stave off a conversation. You really don't want to talk to anyone, do you, Norton? Now these could be the acts of an introvert. I'm much more of an introvert. I love introverts! Or they could be a way to deflect suspicion, to avoid scrutiny, to blend into the background, to get away with just about anything. Exhibit B, bad mail fish. Norton's hardly jolly about his job. You like delivering mail? It puts bread on the table. Rye or pumpernickel. And evidence suggests he's not very good at it either. Dropping a fragile shipment on the ground like that without even asking for a signature and dumping an entire bag of mail on the ground? For shame, Norton. But is he just careless or is he? A criminal. Shocking post office surveillance footage shows Norton throwing out a letter instead of delivering it. That's flagrant mail theft, pal. And it gets worse because we've gotten tips that he's been snooping in SpongeBob's mail. One magic kit and another one of these yellow things. That parcel is wrapped up tight. So how did you know it was a magic kit, Norton? What magic kit? Actual magic? X-ray vision? Or are you just prying through the post, snooping through the shipments, opening everyone's mail? And it seems there's no line Norton won't cross because he'll go from snooping to something even more sinister. Watch carefully. <laughs> My favorite novelty T-shirt. Someone's here! Did you see that? Right there. Let's break this down. One, Norton rings the doorbell. My favorite novelty t-shirt. Two, SpongeBob leaves Gary's shell. Oh, someone's here! Three, Norton is already inside the house. Special delivery for SpongeBob SquarePants. Special delivery, eh, Norton? Does special delivery mean breaking and entering? Trespassing? Pineapple invasion? Which leads us to... Exhibit C, the double. If Norton doesn't care about his delivery duties, why else would he be on Conch Street? It's not to see SpongeBob SquarePants. Boy, if I weren't already on parole. He hates SpongeBob SquarePants. And he certainly has no interest in Patrick Starr. No, it seems the only fish on Conch Street that Norton's happy to see is Squidward Tennis Ball. Balls. That's tentacles. Sorry, Squidward tentacles. Sounds strange. It gets stranger. Norton doesn't just lurk around Conch Street when Squidward's almost at peak handsomeness. Guess who's in the admiring crowd? Norton. Who can blame him, right? But it goes even further. Norton shows up in court the very day Squidward is testifying. And he's cultivated some very specific tastes. I love going to fancy art galleries. That's me! And eating delicious food. Especially when that delicious food is something you can spread on a toast, toast point. <laughs> That's right. Norton's memorized Squidward's obscure interests. But are his tastes actually that refined? Or could he be faking it? Because we have evidence that Norton's real favorite snack is potato chips. Potato chips are his favorite snack. You heard the fish. Norton goes nuts for potato chips. So why lie, Norton? Why pretend to love this when you really love that? It's almost as if he said it to mimic Squidward. The preferential treatment, the odd coincidences, the toast points. Could it be that Norton is jealous of Squidward tentacles? That's tennis ball.
tentacles. Could his adopted tastes, his disdain for his job, his dismissal of SpongeBob all be an act? A way to mimic Squidward, to mirror his every move, to become his exact double? But there are still so many questions. Do you deliver your own mail, or do you have your own mail person? But then who delivers his mail? Is there a never-ending chain of mailmen delivering mail to other mailmen? But most importantly, why would anyone want to be more like Squidward? And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Welcome to Scenic Bikini Bottom. Population, uh, unclear. Who's number 46,853? At one point, it seems at least 46,853 fish lived in Bikini Bottom. But by the time SpongeBob skips town, the population's plummeted to 538 and drop it. Minus one. So how and why did the population plunge 98.8%? Did at least 46,315 fish all decide to move away? Or did they just vanish? File this one under W. Or was there a wumbo wormhole? Bikini Bottom is full of sinister secrets, but nothing is more disturbing than the shocking truth about snails. This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. You've seen some suspicious fishes, but none of their plots can compare to the snail crisis. Haven't heard of it? Not surprising, because everyone has turned a blind eye to the strange fates of countless snails. Exhibit A, the strays. Gary the snails got it all. Plenty of snail poe. <laughs> Weekly baths. And a pair of stylish wingtips. But it seems most snails aren't so lucky. Most snails' owners seem completely inattentive even negligent. And those are just the snails who have owners. Are you a stray? Wondering why this pet store owner instantly assumes Gary's a stray? It's probably because Bikini Bottom is overrun with stray snails. Gangs of feral gastropods rove the streets, scavenging for nachos. Guess he didn't like nachos. And wreaking havoc on local business owners. But the strays may be the lucky ones. Because while some snails take to the streets, others vanish entirely. Exhibit B, disappearances. Meet Snelly, the purebred snail. Wow, a snail made out of bread. Snelly cost nearly two grand. Which cost me $1,700. She came with her own certificate of pedigree, and she was a near champion in the sport of kings. And what a beautiful day for the sport of kings, of which I am a huge fan. But purebred pedigreed Snelly, the hopeless romantic, the $1,700 snail, lost just one race. <laughs> was never seen again. And isn't it time someone asked what happened to Larry the Snail? Come on, let me show you around. Gary's grumpy replacement built a life for himself in his new home. But when Gary returned, what happened to Larry? He vanished. Think there was an ocean-wide search for Larry? A heart-rending ballad? Skywriting? Think again. No, Larry disappeared with no tears shed and no questions asked, and he wouldn't be the last snail. Consider the case of Jerry. And Gary and Larry are real different than Jerry. Does he actually live in SpongeBob's pocket day in and day out? Or could he be counted among the missing. And remember, Annette? No, that's Snelly again. N no, no, that's Mary. Right, she was Mrs. Puff's supposedly beloved pet. I've had her since I was a little girl. But Annette was rescued from a tree. Gotcha! And then disappeared without a trace. Thank you, Birdman! No sign of her anywhere in Mrs. Puff's house. Not here. Or here, or even here. Just one photo, a single photo of a dearly loved pet who completely vanished with no search, no explanation. Did these indoor snails leave their old lives behind to join a roving gang of strays? Or is something more sinister going on here? 
Exhibit C, The Shells. Snelly, Larry, Jerry, Annette. Is there anything these vanished snails leave behind? Any sign of their existence? Just one. Their shells. Yes, a heap of broken, empty shells was discovered in one Las Vegas home. But it's just the tip of the iceberg. Because there's evidence of a whole stockpile of shells hiding in plain sight. You come on down to Angry Jack's Shell Emporium. Angry Jack's. A whole warehouse of refurbished shells taken from their snails and shined up for sale. And for a pretty penny, too. And for the affordable price of just $95, 95 95 Selling refurbished shells seems harmless until you consider that snails are born with their shells and never leave them. So each of those shells must have been grown by a snail. But while the shells are still around... There she is. What happened to the snails inside? Them. So many shells, so few pet snails, something's not adding up. Or maybe it's adding up perfectly. We may never get to the bottom of the snail crisis, but one thing's for sure, there's something slimy going on in Bikini Bottom. And now, a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Welcome to Bikini Bottom's most exclusive club, the Magic Conch Club. Praise the Magic Conch! These devotees of the Magic Conch shell always consult the wisdom of the conch. The shell knows all! But how is the Magic Conch's advice always 100% right? How could it know that a feast would fall right out of the sky? That doing nothing was the key to survival. Nothing. Is this plastic pull-string conch calculating every possible outcome? Is it just dumb luck? Or could it actually have mystical powers? Oh, hail the, the magic, magic conch. conch! Will the secrets of the magic conch ever be revealed? No. File this one under... Oh. For... Oh. Bikini Bottom. One week before hibernation season, an anonymous local sponge vanished without a trace and caused the formation of an elusive shadow organization behind every business decision, political campaign, and aquatic catastrophe in Bikini Bottom. An organization known only as Gold Team. Gold Team rules! This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. We all know the famous Gold Team, one of two famous teams formed by Sandy Cheeks. Apple Team, you search uptown. Gold Team searches downtown. Gold Team's sole purpose is to search for a missing sponge. Or is it? Put your dorsal fins into it! While they may look like an ordinary search party, beneath the surface, Gold Team is one fishy faction. Exhibit A. Dominant Disciples. Is Gold Team really just a search party? Or are they a highly specialized crew of elite fish, each with their own set of very specific skills? Remember to drink plenty of fluids. Devor, a muscular fish who acts as the team's muscle slash enforcer, as long as his weak constitutions don't get in the way. Those of you with weak constitutions may want to leave the stadium. I gotta get out of here! Too late! His blind sense of tribalism makes him the perfect leader of Gold Team. Gold Team rules! Henry, an orange striped fish with the ability to change colors on command and infiltrate any party in Bikini Bottom. Can you believe this guy crashed your party? Stephen, a renowned snorkel specialist with the ability to communicate with boots. Yeah, I have the crusty special. Thank you, sir. An unnamed blue fish with a purple stripe who can blend in with both the young folk and the elderly of Bikini Bottom without arousing suspicion. He's also clearly lying about his childhood. As you can see, me and Chocolate no longer hang. If that's really you, where is your signature purple stripe? You can keep that for five bucks. I'll take ten. And finally, the supernatural anomaly himself, Nat Peterson, whose strange powers we already covered in a previous investigation. Here he's seen shape-shifting into a human hand. Does this sound like the makeup of a simple search party to you? No, something just doesn't add up about Gold Team. Even their very origins are mired with contradictions. Which brings us to Exhibit B, Alpha Team. The following is an official clip documenting the supposed creation of Gold Team. Alpha Team, you search uptown. Gold Team searches downtown. Any questions? Gold Team rules. 
Wolf. Let's analyze this a bit more closely. Sandy assigns the code named Alpha Team to the first group in the back right corner of the Krusty Krab. Alpha Team, you search Uptown. But now, let's watch the footage of Gold Team once again. Where are they standing? The back right corner of the Krusty Krab. That's right. The order that we know as Gold Team is really the group Sandy named Alpha Team. Alpha Team, you search Uptown. And yet, they immediately begin calling themselves Gold Team. Gold Team Ladies. As if they had already decided that was their name before the meeting? Is it possible that Gold Team had been formed long before Sandy assigned them a name? Is it possible that Gold Team has always been lurking around Bikini Bottom? Not to search for missing sponges, but instead to accomplish their more sinister agenda? Exhibit C, their more sinister agenda. Throughout the history of Bikini Bottom, during every major catastrophe, Gold Team was there. Let's examine this footage from the infamous ripped pants debacle of Goo Lagoon. When SpongeBob first arrives, Tibor is clearly visible on the beach, working out. But then, just moments before the inciting pant rip, he's nowhere to be found. Coincidence? We don't think so. Is it possible that Tibor is no longer here because he's the one who ripped SpongeBob's pants? Maybe this incident wasn't an accident at all. Maybe it was a highly coordinated attack on SpongeBob's pants. Why else would the beachgoers that day be full of members of Gold Team? No doubt watching SpongeBob to make sure the job gets done. Not convinced? Then let's look at this footage from the town meeting discussing the Alaskan bullworm assault on Bikini Bottom. Gold Team leader, Tabor, is nowhere to be found. But then... I'd rather that worm come in here right now and eat you all alive! He suddenly appears, only seconds after Krabs mentions the worm eating the citizens alive, proving that Gold Team has an insatiable appetite for carnage. How did he know the discussion had taken this turn, you ask? Maybe because he had Gold Team spies placed all throughout the meeting. At every important meeting, Gold Team is there. Whenever there's a powerful, influential figure, Gold Team lurks behind them. And during every disaster at Bikini Bottom, Gold Team is conveniently nearby. They even attend parties that only the highest order of Bikini Bottomites are invited to. Dude. How did you get in there? Giving them a means to rub fins with influential fish like the mayor of Bikini Bottom himself. The very same mayor who makes chaotic decisions like opening a bridge before it's finished. It is with great pride that I officially open this unfinished bridge. Would this mean that even the mayor is in Gold Team's pocket? That even the government is being influenced or even controlled by Gold Team? Wake up, people! Gold Team has members placed in organizations all throughout Bikini Bottom. And Bikini Bottom just happens to be mired in chaos. The very thing Gold Team covets. They've been exercising their influence over the city ever since the day they were created and even before. So maybe, just maybe, regardless of the politicians, kings, and even gods in Bikini Bottom, the people who are truly ruling the city are the members of an elusive secret order whose mantra is literally Gold Team Rules. And now, for a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. We all know Wormy, a highly emotive worm turned harmless butterfly. But was Wormy the butterfly really harmless? Oh, it looks harmless. It's kind of cute. Or was he hiding strange supernatural powers? If the citizens truly had nothing to fear, then explain this meteor striking the underwater city. Or the citizens suddenly floating into the sky. Is this some strange coincidence? Or should we fear Wormy after all? File this one under A for... Ah! Innocent Elder or Sinister Senior with an unhealthy obsession with Patrick Starr? Oh, boys! This is Bikini Bottom Mysteries. Meet Mary. Yes? A typical old lady with a love for laughing during ab workouts, I guess. <laughs> But behind those innocent dentures, there's something about Mary that's just not right. Exhibit A, strange behavior. 
Mary pretends to be a tired old lady living a quiet life in a nursing home. But if you watch closely, Mary is secretly a lot more spry than she lets on. She's been spotted tanning with the young folk. Marching in a parade. And even on a spicy date with Dennis. Even though he's married to Mabel. So polite. Just like we raised him. But if you think that's strange, hold on to your hard candies, because things are about to get very wrinkly. Suspicious behavior's only the half of it. Some claim Mary changes her very appearance, changing colors, wearing glasses, even making herself shorter somehow. Who do you know who wears glasses, is short, and is in a relationship with Dennis? That's right, fellow white-haired, M-named Shady Shoals resident, Mabel. Better keep an eye on your social security check, Mabel, because Mary is coming for your identity. Oh, dear! You even both have a love for Exhibit B, chocolate. All around town, Mary can be seen indulging in sweets, waiting in line for ice cream, and even drinking orange drink when everyone else drinks water. So when local chocolate salesmen show up at her door, she's bound to buy some, right? No, no! Mary, Mary, quite contrary. There's only one reason a known sweet tooth with buckets full of cash would refuse to buy chocolate. You rub it on your skin and it makes you live forever. No, no, live no, forever, no. you say? I'll take one. That's right, to spite her own mother. You just can't wait for me to die, can you? Because there's one burning secret that drives Mary to lurk all around town. A burning secret that makes her dress more like Mabel. A burning secret that is tearing this mother and daughter apart. And that burning secret is Exhibit C, Patrick Starr. Oh. You heard that right. We've been tipped off by an anonymous source that Patrick Starr and Mary herself were sighted on a romantic date together in the fanciest restaurant in town. Who could afford to rent out the whole restaurant? And while there was never a second date, it appears that Mary is just not over him. When Patrick goes to the theater, Mary is there. When he takes up knitting, Mary is there. Even when he goes tanning, Mary is there. And she's been following Patrick all over Bikini Bottom. Who are you people? Is that why she dressed like Mabel? Was she jealous of the attention Patrick gives her? Protecting Bikini Bottom from a scoundrel! Is that why she rallies against her own mother? Jealous of the time Patrick asked her out? Oh, what is it, Poppy? You wanna go out? You wanna go out? Resentful to be in a twisted love triangle, betrayed by the very fish she trusted most? Yikes. Cheer up, Mary. We may never know why you and Patrick didn't work out. But one thing's for sure, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah, you see what I did there? And because they're fish. And now, for a Bikini Bottom bonus mystery. Do you know what today is? A noise Squidward Day. We all know when a noise Squidward Day is. No, silly. That's on the 15th. But take a closer look at SpongeBob's calendar. That's on the 15th. 
If this is Tuesday the 15th, how can one week earlier be the 5th? That's 10 days, not 7. And shouldn't one week later be the 22nd, not the 21st? Is the math just wrong? You simply change the literal term to a coefficient, and the minuend will achieve the desired quotient. Or is SpongeBob practicing time travel? Maybe if you hadn't touched the time machine like we told you, Patrick, we wouldn't be in this mess. File this one under S for say what? Have you seen something strange under the sea? Tune in next time for more investigation.